Hello my Charmed Ones and welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I had a lot of little odds and ends that I wanted to share with you so I thought it would be best if I just like compiled a workday vlog for you. So without further ado, let's jump in because I've got a lot to talk to you about today. <music> So first thing I want to let you guys know is for breakfast lately, what I've been eating is two of these homemade egg bites. And these are like my version of Starbucks's bacon and Gruyere egg bites, if you're familiar with those. Um, I'm, I don't have like a clip or anything or a necessarily like a recipe for how I make these. But if you are interested in me sharing that in like a future vlog, let me know down in the comments and I will definitely do that next time I'm making a batch of these up. But they're absolutely delicious and I actually think they're better than the Starbucks ones and they are not actually sous vide. I make them in the oven, very easy. I've got a little hack that I use for those. So let me know what you think. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you guys today is a little bit more of the behind the scenes of like how I get ready in the morning for work and stuff. As you can see, my hair is actually straightened right now. That's because one of the few things that I do in the morning to get ready, sorry, there's like fuzzy slime all over, is I will blow out my hair with one of these blow out brushes that is like a hair dryer and a round brush put together. If you guys have seen my other video that was also a vlog that was the behind the scenes of like a filming day. You guys would have seen this, I think already. This is the Revlon. Oh, so I think I put it in like an Amazon's favorites too. Um, this isn't the Revlon, sorry, not the Revlon one. I also own the Revlon one, right? That's black with like the pink on the sides. Love it. These things are great. That was my first introduction to one of these hair dryer blowers. But when that one became like a year old, I decided to treat myself to a new one because I never really loved the pink. <laughs> um, so I bought this Hot Tools version. They're identical, except, you know, there's a lot of different brands that do these now, identical. Like they're all must be made in the same factory and just labeled with different brands. And I'm totally here for it because it's a wonderful tool that because I've used the Revlon one to death, I thought it was, you know, fine for me to treat myself to another one after a year, um, just to kind of like make me happy. Um, so this one has like a gunmetal black um, hardware, we would say. So I like this one better, but I still have the Revlon one. I leave it in my other bathroom downstairs for touch-ups, like if I want it. But I feel like maybe it's lagging a little bit, but honestly, it's still in great condition. So I blow dry with this thing. You guys don't need to see me do that because it's way too involved and I have other videos on it. Um, but the first thing I really want to show you today is something I got a lot of questions about in that workday vlog about filming um, from a while ago, which was, I had a lot of questions about people that asked me, I had a lot of questions from people who wanted to know um, what I was doing to my lips. Like people had seen me do a step in my skincare makeup routine that had to do with like plumping my lips essentially. And so that is this little device. I don't know what this is called. This video is sponsored by no one. I will, however, leave you links to everything if you guys are curious to check anything out. I learned about this tool that I have no name for right now, um, on, on other people's Amazon favorites or like beauty favorites and things like that. Essentially, this is um, like a little suction device that's supposed to be for exfoliating your skin and like blackhead removal. If you've seen anybody talking about the, they look like this, these machines that are supposed to like suck your blackheads out. I don't really have a problem with blackheads. I do like this a little bit for exfoliation, although normally for exfoliation, I use my PMD, my personal microderm tool, which is right over here. Oh, this is my personal microderm, right? I use this like once a week. Um, but I do like this. Like I do think sometimes it's nice to have a suction device for exfoliation. And it comes with a whole bunch of different tip heads that are like removable. And I like this nice round, not round one, it's like an oval for plumping your lips. So um, I'm not someone who like ever wants to get like lip injections as of right now, right? Like I'm not someone who does any sort of plastic surgery, but you know, I was thinking like, you know, this whole look is like the lip injected look going on right now. And everybody I feel like wants to make their lips a little plumper. So I'm going to show you not just this today, but two things that I actually use to give myself like fuller lips that I really think make a difference. Because I will say since using this, oh, I got a little baby that's coming to check on me. Starbucks, what's up? You okay? I'm right here. I'm just talking to the camera. Okay. Thank you. Um, since starting, I've started using this, I do feel like the regular exfoliation of my lips and like the light suction that this provides that has been like helping rejuvenate my lips and making them like overall fuller. So I think if you're interested in like, 
you know, getting like a little bit of a look of lip injections, but you're like, I don't know if I really feel like going through all that because personally for me, Right now, you know, unless I had a problem with my lips, I probably wouldn't get them done because everybody who gets lip injections, in my opinion, their lips always end up looking the same. So I don't want that look. I just want my lips to be like a teeny bit plumper. And I think there's a lot of people out there, probably more women than not, that just want a little bit more, that are like, I'm happy with my shape. So I use this guy. It basically is a little suction device that has, um, when they press the buttons and turn it on, there's like five levels of suction. But I usually keep this at like the one to two level, right? And I also have another device. I don't think I've ever talked about it because it wasn't worth talking about. Um, the people who make PMD, I think they made one called the Kiss that was supposed to be for lip enhancement as well. This is like that, but this one is better. I didn't like the PMD Kiss. I didn't think it really did anything, unfortunately. It was like a waste of $100. Um, but this, I think, is worth it, especially since you can use it for other things. Like, you can change out the heads and use it for exfoliating your face. So all I do is turn this on on, like, the setting one, and I hold it in an area of my lips to, like, make them thicker, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, like, do my whole lip routine right now. I just go in pieces around my mouth, basically. And this has a nice light suction. Like, I'm not afraid that I'm going to damage my mouth. And what I do like to do, I don't know if you can see this, and I'm sorry that I'm talking while I'm doing this because it's probably a little annoying. I try to do it right on the edge of my lip so that it gives you a little bit more of a pouty look. Again, so this is basically that idea of doing like vacant lip injections with, you know, through suction. Except I do think there's something to this that if you do this regularly, not every day, I, I don't think it's really good to do it every day, but if you do it regularly, and keep your lips exfoliated, I think that it probably does bring more blood to the you know surface of your lips and then probably increases a little collagen production. I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Definitely not a plastic surgeon, y'all. So, <laughs> um, this is one of those things like use at your own risk, but I don't ever let my lips get bruised or anything doing this. It's just a nice light exfoliation. Okay. And then I just like to do a little in the inside. That's more of like an actual exfoliation. I don't want to show you the tip head because it has some dead skin on it. But I think you can imagine. I just pull lightly. Not anything uncomfortable. So I'm not afraid I'm going to break any blood vessels. Nothing is painful. But I do think it gets a little extra skin off your lips. And just brings the blood up to the surface and you can see nice light like a nice light color on my lips now that's that second thing i use this is amazing and it's a godsend actually i think um this is a product called the pout sparkling rose volumizing lip serum from beauty bio um, I know there's a lot of different lip serums out there a lot of different like lip plump plumping thing things out there I've tried a lot of them. They don't impress me. I love this one. Um, this one is a little pricey, but I actually really love it. It has like a nice metal tip applicator and I just squeeze it a little bit. It has a wonderful taste. If you're someone who likes like a fruity herbal her lip balm, just a little bit goes a long way. I didn't actually, I'm not squeezing it anymore. Now I'm just kind of rubbing the rest of it in. So after I do that exfoliating, I will put this on, rub my lips together. And it does start to tingle. It does have a decent tingle. And the more you rub your lips together, I find the more it tingles. I'm not afraid of a tingle. <laughs> okay, so this is basically my at-home like fake lip injections, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead now, finish up my makeup. I don't really have anything else that I feel like I'm dying to show you from this routine that's like interesting or unique. So I will meet you back downstairs. So next little update I wanted to share with you guys is something that you can probably see behind me right now. But you know what? Let me do a little adjusting. But as you can see, I actually finally found some artwork to put in my office behind my desk. I'm loving these prints. These are 24 by 36 prints that are kind of like a coordinating, like matching crystal geode pattern. If you're interested in them, I'll leave them linked down below for you guys. But I just feel like this brings my entire office together. I shared this on Instagram already. So 
FYI, if you're not already following me on Instagram, that's where I give a lot of the behind the scenes and like first looks at things. So make sure you're following me there at Miss Trenchcoat. So next, let's talk a little bit about business and what I've been working on because next week, which is Friday, November 22nd, if those of you who've been familiar with my series of live events, you guys should know that I have a, another live workshop class scheduled for next Friday, the 22nd at 1 p.m. Eastern time, I believe. I'll double check that and put it in the comments or not the comments, the description. If that's wrong, I'll give you all the details down there. Don't worry about it. But um, I'm really excited about this class because for those of you who have been following along with my live events, you should know that this was a class that was for me themed to be um, all about like passive income, right? So it was all about online business, passive income, online marketing. But you guys know that I never just like take a generic topic. I always like to do a video that's a little bit more themed and a little bit more zeroed in on something specific. So I wanted to announce with you guys today um, something very exciting, which is the actual like title of next week's class, which is honestly something I'm really excited to do, but it's really outside of my box and my comfort zone, but I'm hoping a lot of you like it and that it resonates with you. First, let me give you the title, okay? And I've got to read this off of my computer. The title and topic and subject of next week's free online marketing class is The Marketing Secrets Behind the Sold Out Shane Dawson by Jeffree Star Cosmetics Launch. So I'm actually going to be doing a case study, like a business case study, on the whole Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star conspiracy palette launch um, series if you guys have been following along on YouTube. So hopefully there are many of you right now who know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you may just want to go ahead and Google it. Maybe I'll leave you some links again in the description for the series so you can watch it. But essentially Shane Dawson is like an OG YouTuber who has been doing documentary style videos on YouTube for the last maybe two years at this point that have really garnered him a lot of positive attention for this like new style of video making on YouTube. And he's partnered up with one of his like best friends, Jeffree Star, who's another YouTuber and a cosmetics mogul amongst other things. And they launched a palette, like a makeup palette, an entire makeup collection really. And it's an interesting thing to watch because they gave us a little bit of the behind the scenes of the process. But for me personally, as someone who is like, someone who I would say that I am very into online business, obviously I run my own online business. Um, I really love to like dig deep into, you know, the marketing trends, the secrets that people are actually executing on that make them successful. And I know that a lot of people who are watching that series, like maybe not everybody is an entrepreneur or wants to start an online business or cares about online marketing. But for those of you who are watching that series who are like, oh, I'd love to one day launch my own cosmetics company or my own whatever company or do this service or do that or do planners or whatnot. It's really easy to think that you can watch that and think, wow, they really just got lucky or that it was kind of like a one once in a lifetime sort of scenario that happened with that launch being sold out. But I promise you guys, anyone who is like me, who even knows the basics of digital marketing knows that that was no fluke. They actually executed on some very hardcore uh, marketing strategies. So I would love to be able to discuss this with you guys and demystify this process and kind of let you in a little bit on the behind the scenes. Obviously, I wasn't there, don't know any of these people, just a random YouTuber who is a fan. But this is something I like to do. So I thought it would be fun to do this as like a case study where we can deconstruct what I'm going to call are the secrets behind the success of this launch so that you guys can really understand that at the end of the day, what they did was pure and simple really great marketing and online business. And if you know what the same secrets are, you can build yourself up to also have a very successful launch like that. So this isn't really about launching particularly, um, but it is going to be about the absolute fundamental strategies and secrets that I can see were executed on from what was shown us in the series. And honestly, um, so I'll just let you guys in on a little something. I don't want to toot my own horn or anything. Like I said earlier, I think that anyone who has like a grasp on digital marketing um, is going to know kind of what is going on with this series anyway. But before the series actually launched, when they just dropped the trailer, I made a whole series of predictions about the way the content was going to flow and the way the launch was going to go, um, even some of the woes that they were going to experience. And it's really interesting to me that like all of the predictions I made have come true. And I really thought that, you know what, I should probably 
discuss this with people and use this as an example because case studies can be so helpful when we can actually see and dissect someone else's business. So, you know, I'm not someone doing like multi-million dollar launches by any means, but I do know what the strategies were that they were using. I understand why it worked. And I want to give you guys some insight if that's something you're interested in. If you're someone who's interested in the business, interested in launching a product or service out into the world, let me give you the down low on all of that. So like I said, this is going to be a live class next Friday, but I want you guys to go ahead and check the link down in the description because I do have a little sign up because I am going to be sending you guys some extra information and doing some other things if you sign up to my email list. So go ahead and if you're really interested in this topic and want to watch a little bit more, a little less as just a casual observer who might just be interested in them and a little bit more about getting some more in-depth business stuff um, taken care of, get yourself signed up. Um, and I will send you, you know, alerts and extra information and all that. So I cannot wait to see you guys next Friday. I really think it's going to be a really great class. So it shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you that this week, that's what I've been working on. I've been going in depth, doing some additional research, putting together some, you know, information and really dissecting the strategy. So I'm doing a lot of work on the, you know, the class outline and the information and all of the marketing and things that are going to go along with that class. So that's what I'm working on today and what I've been working on for like the last week at this point. Now, something else that has also been a sort of like ongoing project for me over the last few weeks that I actually want to kind of make the focus of today's video actually is I have been struggling and I need your help with this. I have been struggling to get together my plans for how I want to set up my planner for 2020. Um, I know that sounds like a funny thing, having plans for how I want to set up my planner, but honestly, by this time in the year, I normally know exactly what my system is going to be and like how it's going to be set up. And if you guys know, next month's free live workshop class that I'm doing is going to be me setting up the planner. But for the life of me, I have not been able to actually pinpoint what it is that I want to do for my planner setup. Now, of course, caveat with all this, you guys know that I do design my own planners and I have my own inserts and things like that. So the bulk of my planner, no matter what it is, no matter what size, no matter what binding, you know, no matter what other goodies or themes that I put within the planner, obviously it's going to be my Charmed Life Master Planner. So it is going to be one of those, whether it's going to be one of my like digital print on demand sort of inserts that I just build into a binding system, or if it's going to be one of my bound planners, um, like my 2020 bound planner. At this point, I really don't know. So I wanted to show you guys what my planner looks like right now, because I'm really liking it. And I wanted to show you guys a few other sort of examples of things I've been thinking about for my planner for 2020 and get your opinion, right? So I just kind of thought that this would be fun to do because I'm really just not sure what I want to do. And I don't want to go out right now and spend a ton of money and buy a bunch of things that, you know, I end up wasting, right? I want to think about this and plan it out and map it out intentionally. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll show you first what my planner is. And I'm not going to do an overhead today because this is a little bit of a vlog. You guys really don't need to see the in-depth. But right now, this is my planner. And I hope you guys can get a really good look at it. It is a personal size one of these clear PVC planners, right? You guys know I have one of these in like an A5 size as well. This is like the personal size. Of course, I will link you guys down below to where I bought this on Amazon. So this is the planner I've been using. You guys know before I was in, or I should say the binder I've been using. You guys know before I was in the black Kate Spade. I love that. There was nothing wrong with it. I was just like craving a slightly different aesthetic. So I wanted to change the binder. So what I've done here with this planner, as you might be able to see, let me just pull this open so you guys can kind of see, take this off, is really all I've done to this differently is I got this craft paper that is um, embossed with like, a, what is that, a crocodile <laughs> embossing? And it's just kind of like the front page um, or like the paid flag page. I don't know, there is a term for this. It's not really the dashboard. It's just kind of like the cover page because this is clear, so it hides my information. Then it goes into like my CEO strategy day and um, then it goes into, you know, the actual planner. And right now I just have, this is the same setup that I had in the Kate Spade, which is why we really don't need to go into it, which was, I have September through December in here. And then I have some projects, you know, my brain dump section, brainstorm notes, et cetera. I've pared down the note section a little bit because 
there was just like a lot of stuff in there, like a lot of different note sheets that I didn't need. And then in the back, what I've done is I've made a folder out of this paper and it's kind of like the back cover. So I really like this aesthetically right now. And you guys know, like I'm totally into having my aesthetic, everything be like matchy matchy and really pretty. Cause when my planner is really pretty, I always want to like gravitate toward it, towards it. So this is where I'm at right now. And the problem, one of the problems I'm having right now is I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to do personal size for 2020, or if I want to go back to my A5 half letter. So you guys know that that's traditionally the size that I use and gravitate towards. But in using this personal planner since September, honestly, I feel like it's been meeting a lot of my needs. Um, I don't find that I need more space. Yes, it's a little bit harder to write in like the project pages and the brainstorms and the notes. It's harder. It's a little bit more cramped to write in in the personal size, but it it doesn't mean that I haven't been able to write everything down. And especially since I did that little trick that I think I showed you guys um, in the previous video, which is I've actually gone in and cut little slits on every page. I have the ability to add and remove pages really quickly. So if I'm having trouble writing within the personal size planner, I just take the page out, write on it and put it back in. Um, so I'm a little shooketh, as they would say, <laughs> over how I've been getting along very well with a personal size because I haven't really used a personal as my real meat and potatoes day-to-day -day planner in a long time. I really only had switched to this for the end of the year because you know, around Q4, I always just feel the urge to change my planner up before I have to like commit to a new planner system for the new year. So um, this is where I'm at right now. But let me share with you guys some more things. I'm like looking around to find all the little thingies that I need to gather up to show you. Um, I'm thinking about some other things. Obviously, oh, oh, oh. let me show you guys this first. You guys have seen this already. Here is the 2020 master planner um, bound, right? So last year I started 2019 in my bound 2019 planner and I had a wonderful time in it. Like until September, I didn't switch out into, until, into this until September. So I really did have a great time with this. One of the things I do find with this planner though is that the week on two pages with the vertical week on two pages, it's like, I don't really end up using all of the space in the way that I plan. I don't, some days, yes, I do. But vast majority of time, I don't. So it's like one of those things. It's like one of those conundrums where you're like, do I get, do I use the thing that's a little bigger so that I have the space if I need it? Or do I stick to what has been enough and make do? And the funny thing is, it's not even like I need this to be petite to like travel or throw in my bag because I so rarely ever actually leave the house with my planner. Um, it really does just stay on my desk. This is like the weird conundrum because I'm just loving the vibe of this right now, to be honest with you. But I also love the vibe of it. this. That's the problem. Like I, everything I make is my vibe. So it's like hard for me to determine what I'm going to do. Next option I actually have. Um, actually, no, let me talk about, uh, hold on, something less exciting before we get to kind of exciting things. Okay, I found it. Okay, so the next option I have that should surprise no one is to do a disc bound system, right? And again, this would be my A5 half letter planner in here. You can see right now I just have like this arc um, black leather with like black discs um, and it actually is super duper thick. This is, I think these are one and a quarter inch discs, but this is actually a complete 2020 planner completely bound into one, into one binding. So into a disc bound sort of binding. So, you know, this is another option that I have for my planner. And I was thinking about it in the past, I have even disc bound a personal size if I wanted to. It's just a matter of you know, what kind of cover do you use? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard. I've In the past, when I've done disc bound personal, I ended up doing a personal size planner that I removed the rings out of. But I feel like at the end of the day, isn't that just what I'm doing right now? Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like a lot of this conversation is superfluous, but I'm literally struggling. And sometimes just talking it out with you guys and getting your opinion helps trigger what it is that I want. At the end of the day, I will be fine. I know that I'll be fine for 2020 because I will be in one of my systems. Just which one am I going to use? Like, am I going to stick to it? I just don't love the idea of, you know, switching out of my system all the time. So I want to find the thing that I want to be like stuck with for 2020. 
Now, this is the next thing I want to show you guys that I got. This should bring back some memories for some of my OGs. Um, I ended up, I did end up buying this because I didn't have these on hand. Um, this is a pack of like matte black wires for the cinch. A few years ago, if you guys don't remember, I actually created my own spiral bound planner. And I will say that I did absolutely love that planner. And I was thinking, what, what if you did that again? Alexis, what if you just did that again? Because I do know what I love in my planner. I do love having everything bound together, right? So I do love this, right? I do love, you know, the actual bound planner as well. I like the idea of having everything in one place, right? And the one thing that I struggle with with something like this is that you can't really flip it over on itself, right? So that's like the one big drawback of this. And it's not a problem. Again, like I said, I pull, I can, you know, if I put the slits on the, on the holes, I can pull pages out and put it in and it doesn't seem necessary, but I don't know. I was reminiscing and I was thinking, would I want to just create a completely new planner from scratch, right? Like make it myself, do a wire bound planner because I have that cinch. I definitely have the ability to do it myself. I've done it before. Is that something I would like for the new year? Thinking about it, not sure. <laughs> um, what else do I have? Where is that other thing? What? Literally, you guys, I've just been pulling things out. Like every single binding option I could think of, I pulled out. Um, so another thing I have here is this bag of these goodies that I have. I bought like a bulk bag of these, and I'll show you in a second what they are. Oh, mailman is here, so the dogs are gonna freak out. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to show you guys are these little sets of rings, okay? So these are like a little set of clip-apart rings that you can use to kind of bind your planner. Now, the great thing about these is if you guys are familiar with like the six ring binder systems, like Filofax, like all those things, you know that they have like two sets of three rings that are kind of together at different intervals to determine like if it's personal size or if it's A5 size or even like maybe even the smallest ones might even be like really close together. I, I don't know because I don't use like the really small planners, but these are these little ring sets that I found on Amazon a while back and I was using to actually like bind together like old inserts to kind of hold them together instead of keeping old inserts in planners, right? Which meant that the planner was then in use and I couldn't use it. I started using these, which is why I have like a whole bulk bag of them on Amazon and they're very affordable. I'll leave those linked down below. So I was thinking, I'm like, well, what if I used these, right? Um, as the, you know, the binding, right? The only issue is I did test this out, you know, with my old inserts. And the one thing about these that's a little bit annoying is they're a little bit fidgety. These are great for creating, like, you know, for binding together old planner inserts, but it might not be the best thing for use, like a day-to-day -day -day planner use because they do shift a little bit, like on this metal backing and you kind of have to have it just right or else they're kind of like a little twisted. So that's one drawback. These, like I said, great for storage inserts. Not sure how I feel about binding a planner with these, um, but it was another option. Like I did pull these out as an option. And then of course, the last option I pretty much gave myself was, well, why don't you get excited and buy yourself a new planner? Like you don't really buy binders a ton, right? It's been, it's been a while since I've bought a binder, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, I think it's been a while. I think it's been a while since I've bought like a binder or at least like one that's like more expensive than like this $8 binder off of Amazon. You know what I mean? So I was taking a look over on Filofax's website and I saw a few planner binders that I was interested in. So let me go ahead and pull that up on my computer and let's talk about it because I would love to get your opinion on these. Um, part of me thinks, yeah, yeah, treat yourself to a new binder. Could be exciting for a new year. But part of me is also like, um, do you really need this? Like you have so many other binders. Is the binder really going to make a difference? You guys tell me. Okay, so here we are on the Filofax website. And I'm just gonna show you guys this A5 planner that I saw and really, really loved. Thought I'd get your opinion on it because I don't want to just go ahead and buy something and it be 
wrong. Oh, this one's so pretty. This isn't it. I'm just looking at this. What is that? What comes in black? Classic clock. <laughs> Classic crock. Um, $314. That's going to be a hard pass. Like, I, I don't want to have to spend $300 to get that sort of a look. I'm sorry. Oh, here she is. Here she is. Here she is. Okay. Here's the first planner that I was seriously thinking about. Okay. So this planner is the Domino Lux A5 Organizer in black. It comes in some other colors that I'm absolutely not interested in. And it also comes in a personal size, right? Um, let's see if I can break this up in a big, is that a better, that's probably a better view for you guys. Oh, it changes views when I move it around. Okay. So something you can notice about this, it is the Domino style, which is a more affordable style of the file effects planner. As you can see here, it's 5770. Okay. And I do have dominoes. I don't mind the, you know, the layout in them. I think that they're a great binder. They are a little bit on the more, you know, more affordable end of Filofax's range. And I don't normally gravitate gravitate towards them all the time. But something I loved about this one was that it had the black quilting. And you guys know how I feel about that. You know what I mean? Like that's so my aesthetic. <clears throat> so I was thinking, oh, do I want this? Do I want this binder, right? Um, from what I can tell here, obviously I could do A5 or I could do personal. So this is one thing I have to decide if I'd want A5 or if I'd want personal. Um, if they do have these great pockets um, in the front and back, and I think they even have a pocket for like a notepad, which I do love. I do love having the idea um, of a tear pad at the back because that's great for like taking notes and just like leaving them around if you want them. You know what I mean? Like if you need to write a note for somebody, you just like, you know, rip it off, you're good. Or it's good for just jotting down information like when you're on the phone, you know, you're just taking info on the phone and, you know, just want to jot some things down that don't need to like stay in your planner permanently. So this is one of the options I'm considering in either A5 or personal size. Um, I'll skip looking at the personal size one because it basically looks like this, but smaller. <laughs> now, there is another planner I saw and I'm like, oh, do I want this one? <laughs> So let's take a look at this. I know this isn't any sort of new style. I feel like this Lux Domino, it might be a little bit newer. I've never seen this before. So it's new to me. I have seen this before. So this is the like white marble organizer. Something I love about this, obviously exterior is white marble and then the interior is black. I also like all of the um, pockets on the side, which is great. And it has a pen loop. I don't, does the domino have a pen loop? I think they do. They must. They must. I'm sure it does. Yeah, there's a pen loop. Um, so it has a nice pen loop on the side. You know, it's, what can I say? It's a white marble planner. You know what I mean? And this also comes in personal. This one's a little bit more expensive. It's 76. Like, it's not outside of my budget by any means, but like, I'm just trying to think, like, am I going to love this enough to buy it? I'm not sure. And I know some of you out there are going to be like, if you're not sure, then that's a no. And I agree with you sometimes, but I'm so torn right now <laughs> over what I should do. I really am not sure what to do. Now, the last planner that I was thinking about is an oldie but a goodie. <laughs> so again, this is another planner that has been in the community, been around the planner community for a while. I'm sorry if you can hear Sully. He is upstairs barking out the window. I don't know. He must see like, I don't know, a leaf or a car in the distance that he's angry at. So I hope you can't hear that too much. But the Filofax original, okay? So Filofax original specifically in the patent nude, okay? This is an OG planner, right? This is an OG planner. If you guys have been following me, you know that I have these in hot pink. Um, and I have done various things to them, like deconstructed them to make them a planner cover. Um, in the past, I've never been one who's been drawn in by the nude. I always thought it was pretty and clean and classic, but I've never been as drawn into it as I am right now. And I think that's because if you guys saw that Kiki K unboxing I did, there was that almondy nude um, notebook cover that they sent me, Kiki K. And ever since then, I've, I've been regretting um, that it really doesn't fit any of my planners in it. Like I wouldn't be able to really use my A5 planners in there, unfortunately, bound or unbound, right? It just is not going to fit right. So I was thinking, I'm like, well, that's very similar to the patent nude, right? And I know a lot of people love this. I know it's a great planner, great quality, beautiful cover, 
This one, we're getting a little more expensive here, $123. And I know you guys know that I'm not afraid to spend money, that I like to have nice things. But honestly, when it comes to my planners, I really don't like spending tons and tons of money on them. You know what I mean? And the reason is, is because I do see them in some way as a disposable accessory in that if I knew that I would have one file of facts for the rest of my life, sure, I would spend the $314 on that crocodile embossed one. But I know that's not how I am throughout the year. So I hate spending, you know, a lot of money on planners. So those are the three that I'm thinking about, right? The Domino Lux has the quilting I like. The architecture marble is white marble. Other than that, though, it's pretty basic. It is pretty basic. Um, which is, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, there really isn't anything wrong with it. I do feel like maybe the Domino Lux I might like a little bit better. I don't know. The Domino is an interesting planner because it is so thin. That's one of the things I've always loved about it. It really has a very sleek silhouette. And um, I think this, like, quilting is beautiful, but I wonder if the patent quilting will look cheap. Okay, so that's all of the new planners I've been kind of looking at, the new binders I've been looking at, and all of the binding methods at my disposal. So I would absolutely love to get your feedback on what you think I should do for my 2020 planner. Again, I know what the inside's going to look like. I just don't know what size I feel like using and what binding methodology I might be the most happy with. So I would love your opinions. Please leave me comments, let me know, and send me pictures if you guys already have your planner setups like, or if you have any of these planners that I showed you from Filofax, please send me pictures on Instagram or send me an email because I would love to get some reviews. Like I said, the Lux Domino, it looks nice in pictures. I'm not sure how it will look in real life with um, that patent and the quilting. Now, the dogs were barking a little bit earlier. Is this my, no, this isn't my landscaper. The neighbor's landscaper is here. And so there's noise going on in the back. But I think that's really everything I wanted to cover in today's video. So recap, um, I'm gonna leave everything that we talked about today as much as I can linked down below in the comments. And make sure you go ahead and sign up for that class that I'm doing next week, the live class. Um, all about, you know, demystifying and breaking down the marketing secrets that were used to help make the Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star collab a success. I'm really excited about this video. So excited. So um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to share it. And if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more awesome videos by me. And until next time, bye-bye.